So we have a simple uh, flat plane ocean render scene in RIS here. We've got an area light and an environment light. And we've got our displacement, our ocean displacement system here plugged into LM subsurface, which is a great one to use for ocean rendering. But you can also use PXR Disney or Glass, a lot of different ones. So it's got that kind of plug and play uh, functionality. But let's take a, just a quick look what we're looking at. I'm going to pop out an IPR render here just so we can see what the render looks like. And I've deliberately placed that area light right there so we get some nice subsurface scattering. It's quite subtle in here, but just uh, was playing around with LM subsurface. And we can see our kind of low frequency waves here. So in this uh, example, what we want to do is we just want to show how to animate these waves uh, over doing a batch render because with oceans, that's typically what you'll want to be doing. And that's also the power of our ocean shader here in RenderMan. Um, so we got a general idea of what it looks like, so I'll stop that IPR. And I'm going to take a look at the node editor just to look at the setup here. So if we zoom in, we can see we have our shading group here. And the shading group has a surface shader material and a displacement material, which is our disp choppy ocean. And we can switch PXR Disney, LM Glass, as I mentioned, really anything that we want for a surface shader but we want to make sure our choppy ocean shader is plugged into the displacement slot. Now you'll notice on the frame here, I've got an expression, that's why it's purple, and we can see upstream there's an expression node and there's a time node. So this one is just putting the current frame in, so that's a great way to animate your ocean is just take this frame and if I right click and edit expression, if you don't already have it in there, you can just add expression and I'm just putting the name of the shader, disp choppy ocean dot frame, with capital F, equals frame, and that just gives it the current frame. So if I scrub through in Maya, I'm on frame one. If I go to frame two, three, four, you can see the slider at the bottom here is seven, and so is our frame. It's seven, so it just automatically updates the frame. And that's, again, a great way to animate it. So once that is set up, just by that one line expression, let's see if it works by rendering a batch render on the farm. I'm going to use just RenderMan batch. And all we need to seize a couple of frames for it to be working. So what I'm going to do in the RenderMan menu, I'm going to do RenderMan, Batch Render. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to take a look at the options because sometimes the Batch Render gets different options. I want to make sure we're on our current version of RenderMan here. And it's going to Local Queue. And we actually want Immediate Rib Local Render as the style there. And the Batch Render is going to take our RenderMan Globals. So let's take down the resolution a little bit. I'm just going to put it really low at 320 by 240. We want quick renders and we just want to see result. And the start and end frame, we'll just do five frames. Maybe we can do 10. And I'm rendering out to 8-bit uh, TIFF. So when I do that, I want to make sure I'm just baking in the gamma because I'm not going to do anything fancy in compositing. So under RenderMan Globals, instead of Advanced RenderMan Controls, it's a very similar menu, but under the Passes tab, on my exposure, the first one is exposure, the second one is gamma. I'm going to make sure that's 2.2. Just bakes in that sRGB into our TIFF so we don't have to do anything in comp. So that looks to be set up correctly. Let's try that. I'm just going to hit batch render here. It's going to run through those frames. You can see the slider at the bottom. Then local queue magically pops up. Once it's reached 100%, I can go over to where my Maya project is. So I set my Maya projector uh, to this directory here called Maya. And then under the RenderMan folder, I've got this images directory. And we can see that it created the first one, and now it's rendering the second one. So we'll wait for it to do a few frames. And I'll just pause the video and jump over when there's multiple frames in there. And we can see then if our animation is working. And while we're waiting for these epic frames to render, what, what's our goal? Like, what does it look like? So I've pre-rendered these before. I just wanted to show them from scratch. But if we look at what our animation should look like, I'll just bring this up. And I can see that nicely animating. And we get that sub subtle subsurface. And we've got just really cool wave animations. And you can totally tweak these out to how you want them animated. But here's just an example of how to do that with the current settings and just modifying that frame parameter. So we can bring up some other ones as well. 
So here's kind of a, a day night thing. We have our day HDR and a night HDR that we have on our website. Those are kind of cool. And actually, instead of a plane, I animated a sphere. Um, so it's got that nice kind of horizon line there. So there's a lot of different stuff you can do. And now that we've got about five frames, why don't we just load those up? So if I go through these five frames, you can see these are fresh. They're rendering. We just built it up from scratch. So it is working and ultimately we'll get that final render that we saw before. But here we can just see just over a few frames. That's how you set up your batch render. So go ahead and do that and then you can render out as long of a sequence as you want with the waves animating in the displacement with our ocean shader.